Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of virtual learning. It's Amber here. I hope you all are doing well. So this week I'm going to be giving you guys a series of lessons on some musical genres. I know that you guys have your favorites. I'm going to be talking about some different kinds that you all might not listen to today. But first I'm going to be starting with my personal favorite and that is musical theater. So let's jump right in. So what is musical theater? So in Western theatrical traditions, there are three kinds of dramatic performance involving music. Ballets, where the story is communicated entirely through dance. Operas, where dialogue is entirely sung. And musicals, where the actors will often sing. And all the conversational dialogue will be spoken. I know that you guys are familiar with musicals, but you may not be as familiar with operas. So let's dive into that. So where did musical theater start? They started with opera. So in the 18th century, operas were one of the most important forms of theater in Europe. And there were many kinds, and there were the kinds that were beautiful and pretty to watch, and then there were the more comic operas. Then there were Operettas, which was a short opera with a light and humorous theme that has spoken dialogue, sort of like musical theater today. And they were very popular among the different social classes, high and low. And a notable example of one of these operettas is the Mikado by Gilbert and Sullivan, an operetta about Japan. And Gilbert and Sullivan is a world-renowned duo who wrote a lot of operas. So now I'm going to be showing you guys what happened when some kids got to meet an opera singer and ask her about what she does for a living. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but I have actually done my fair share of operas. I did one called Speed Dating Tonight when I was studying voice at the University of Delaware. It was definitely a very different type of experience because you're singing everything. There is no speaking. It's all singing. But I'm going to insert this little clip right here, see how you guys like it, and I'm sure that there'll be some things that you did not know about what you get to do for singing for a living. So I'll see you. So fun fact about Angel that you guys have noticed, she's performed all over the world. New York? I've been to New York. Turkey? I've been to Turkey. I've sung in Istanbul. And what is that another... place? Turkey's... <laughs> Turkey's really far. California? I've been to California a lot. China? I've been to China. Vegas? Of course. I love Vegas. Me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> How many languages do you know? Well, I can speak two languages fluently, mm -hmm. and I can understand five languages, only English and Spanish I can speak. Oh. But Not Italian? Because a lot of software is Italian. That's really, it's, this is great. This is great. It's my kind of girl. <laughs> yes. Most of the opera that's really popular is in Italian. Sing, sing something in Italian. your voice so loud without any like amplifiers. Mm -hmm. The most important thing when I sing is to be supported on my breath and a lot of practicing. Does your voice ever get tired? I don't know that it's my voice that's really tired because I don't ever feel like tired in my throat. Where I get tired is my body just gets really tired because it's almost in a way it's almost like doing a sport. All right, so I hope you guys found that really cool. I Her voice is gorgeous, I will say that for one, and I loved all of the kids' reactions to her. But we're gonna move right along. Um, operettas did eventually evolve into minstrel shows, and these were a small cast of satirical characters with larger-than-life personalities. So they were pretty much funny on purpose for the purpose of your entertainment. So then, musical theater first arrived with the premiere of The Black Crook in New York in 1866, so in the 1800s. The show ran for a record-breaking 474 performance. Now, if you think about musical theater today, that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but honestly, back in the day when new performance styles were coming about, that was a lot, and it was definitely a big deal for people to want to see this show over and over again. Because not only why shows get popular on Broadway is because, you know, one person or a group of theater sees it for the first time, you see it multiple times because you love it. 
So this inspired other writers to roll out their own versions of productions for the audience's eye to see, and this is how we arrived to the world of musical theater and Broadway. So the early 20th century was a huge time in musical theater history that created shows we know and love today. So I'm going to name some of those off and let's see how many that you guys know. So first we have Showboat in Oklahoma. These were some early groundbreakers. Then we have West Side Story, Hair, A Chorus Line, Les Miserables or Les Mis, how some of you guys know it, The Phantom of the Opera, Rent, The Producers, Wicked, and Hamilton. So to put a spotlight on a show that means an awful lot to me and falls into the early age of musical theater would be The Fantastics by Harvey Schmidt and Tom Jones. Um, the Fantastics follows two lovers named Louisa and Matt and their two fathers who trick them into falling in love by pretending to feud. So the reason why that this show is the closest to my heart is because I actually had the honor to portray Louisa my freshman year of college at the University of Delaware for the Harrington Theater Arts Company. It was a very small cast. There was only eight of us. And I just loved everything from the music to portraying Louisa. It was... It was huge. It was definitely one of the greatest experiences that I ever had on stage. Um, I definitely recommend checking out some of the score and the script, and if you can see it anywhere online, I would highly, highly recommend it. Another reason why this show is so great and is such a staple is because the show is the longest running off-Broadway musical. It ran for a total of 42 years until 2002 with 17,162 performances, which is, that's pretty amazing. That's, so think about the 474 that we talked about earlier. This is 17,000. So a lot of people love this show enough to see it two, three, ten times even, which is pretty amazing. So the show was actually later revived and it returned to Off-Broadway in 2006 to 2017. And I actually had the honor to see the show Off-Broadway before it closed. I'll insert a picture of myself here. Um, it was definitely really amazing. It was a um, black box setting. So a black box, the difference between a black box and a normal proscenium stage like you may have at your schools is a black box is literally a box like this and it's black and it's a smaller space so you may not have as much room for sets, big pieces, literally the Fantastics was just one, one set the whole time, which was what made it so amazing, so minimalist. Um, but I'm actually going to insert a little clip of um, like a section of the show, I guess. It's not it's not the full thing, but it's just clips of the show when it was actively running off Broadway. And I hope you guys enjoy that. And I will see you guys soon for the next lesson. Bye. In Manhattan, The Fantastics has been running for over 52 years with over 20,000 performances. Written by Tom Jones and Harvey Schmidt, this play has become a true New York institution. In 2006, the revival opened at the Snapple Theater Center where it plays at the Jerry Orbach Theater in honor of the actor who was the original narrator. The Fantastics is a funny and romantic musical about a boy, a girl, two fathers, and a wall. The narrator asks the audience to use their imagination and follow him into a world of moonlight and music. The boy and the girl fall in love, grow apart, and finally find their way back to each other after realizing the truth in the words, without a hurt, the heart is hollow. If you are in the mood to sit in a small, intimate, off-Broadway theater, and if you want to experience a show with a beautiful story and sweet songs, then look no further than The Fantastics. There is a reason why this is the world's longest-running musical. 
See for yourself to understand why you must follow, follow, follow to see the fantastics. <laughs>